And then I'd go for Dujon Sterling as the right wing back, with Zapacosta starting as the left wing back. Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea for my preview of the Chelsea versus Newcastle game in the fourth round of the FA Cup with the kickoff being on Sunday 1.30pm UK time and obviously as you can see back in the usual surroundings I came back from England flew back to Austria this morning had a great time even though obviously the result against Arsenal was devastating. But let's get into the preview and speak about our opposition, Newcastle. So in the Premier League, Newcastle currently sit in 15th with 23 points on 24 games, just one point above the relegation zone, winning six games, drawing five and losing 13. With the exception of a few games this season, Newcastle don't tend to score a lot of goals, having scored 22 so far this season. But they are usually quite decent at the back, conceding an acceptable 34 goals. The recent results haven't been too bad, but not great either to be honest they lost to man city twice since boxing day which is obviously you know more than fair enough for newcastle one of those two defeats being the last game on saturday when they lost 3-1 at manchester city but they made a hard work for man city in both games that they lost against them they also got draws at home against swansea and away at brighton but they did manage to beat stoke 1-0 on new year's day and in the third run of the fa cup just a few weeks ago they beat league two side luton town 3-1 at home. Now against Man City they went with a 5-4-1 formation in both games but usually Newcastle tend to start with a 4-2-3-1 or some variation of that. They've not had a real standout player so far this season to be honest. The top scorer is Joselu with just four goals while Matt Ritchie has set up the most goals with five assists. So Newcastle haven't had a midweek game since December but they are facing Burnley on coming Wednesday and as they are obviously fighting relegation, just one point above the relegation zone, they might prioritise the league over the cup. The only player that will miss the game for sure with injury for Newcastle is defender Jesus Gámez. While Benitez has said that they'll start some players that haven't played all too much, mixed with some regulars basically. Kennedy, who has obviously just joined Newcastle on the loan until the end of the season, obviously can't face us. Obviously, first of all, he's a loanee, but he's also cup tied anyway, having already featured for Chelsea in both games against Norwich. And then Benitez was actually very honest in saying that because of the money in the Premier League, so you safety in the league basically takes priority over the FA Cup so I wouldn't expect the first team to start obviously he said you know they will mix it kind of thing but I wouldn't expect a too strong of a team by Newcastle but now coming to Antonio Conte's pre-match press conference and starting it off with some team news Alvaro Morata and Thibaut Courtois remain out injured obviously they both missed the game against Arsenal and obviously William who had to come off against Arsenal with a hamstring injury are all out injured and will miss the game Conte wouldn't or couldn't give any specifics as to how long they will remain sidelined for, but Conte doesn't believe William's injury to be very serious, which is obviously good. He did say that Fabregas trained with the rest of the squad today and Conte will check his availability tomorrow, which again is good news according to the boss as well. And obviously, like in every press conference, he was asked about transfers and also like in every press conference, Conte's response was plain and simple, just saying that if there is news, we will inform you. He did add though that he's happy if he continues to work with the same players, but he's also happy if a few new players do come in. Then Conte basically confirmed that Barkley will play and probably start on Sunday. He said it's not easy to come back after such a long injury, but to get properly ready and fit, you need to play not just train and with the William and Morata injury we don't really have that many options anyway and the next topic that Bob spoke about obviously Charlie Musunda wasn't in the squad against Arsenal after everyone expected him to be not having been selected to play in the big cup game for the under 23 side the night before Conte was asked if the club is ready to loan Musunda out and he gave the same response as about the other transfers he just said the club will inform the public if anything happens but he did confirm that Musunda is available for selection obviously with Kennedy joining Newcastle on loan Conte was asked if he's worried about Marcus Alonso especially if we don't bring in another left wing back option. Conte said he isn't worried about him. He's ready to play, ready to play every game. And to be honest, I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but I like the confidence in Alonso's body. Like, I mean, fair play. What a machine he must be. But even though, you know, we've already seen his fatigue kicking in in some games here and there, basically, this season. So I'm not too sure about that statement. Let's just hope we get, you know, whether that's Emerson or someone else, let's just hope we get someone in. But that's really it from the press conference and now coming to Chelsea and speaking about the lineup. And well, I'll try to tell you the team I'd like to see start, but still being somewhat realistic with what Conte could go with. So like I said, Morata, Courtois and William are out. Fabregas might be back, but Cahill and Drinkwater are back from injury, obviously having already made the bench against Arsenal in midweek. So for me, it just has to be 3-4-3. Even though it wasn't the greatest against Arsenal, I think it's still a lot better than the 3-5-2 at the moment. So obviously with Courtois out, it has to be Caballero and goal. The back three I expect to play and I want to play as well is Ampadre as the right side of centre-back. David Luiz is the central centre back with Gary Cale obviously returning from injury as the left side of centre back. And then I'd go for Dujon Sterling as the right wing back with Zapacosta starting as the left wing back. Maybe they will switch around as well. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure if Sterling is as comfortable as Zapacosta playing on the left 
So because they hasn't done it a lot either, but he, for example, he came on against Brighton and played left left wing back, obviously, instead of Marcus Alonso. So we'll have to see, but I hope for that. Maybe there is a chance in that. Obviously, Moses just played against Arsenal. Alonso, you know, Kennedy's gone. So hopefully he will start Dijon starting. I would love that. And obviously just Zappa Costa has to play, obviously. Then he's central from midfield. Then he drink water. But obviously start is just a question. Will Fabregas start next to him? If he is fit, I would start him. And he probably will. Otherwise, it's probably going to be Kante, I suppose, as Bakayoko has played a lot of minutes in the last few weeks. Then as part of the front three, I'd have Musonda, even though I'm really not sure if he'll be involved. But in my opinion, he just has to start. On the other side, I'd have Ross Barkley. It's not his best position. We all know that. But you've got to give him time after returning from such a bad and long-winded injury. And playing in a new position as well. So even though he wasn't great against Arsenal when he came on and had a few, you know, moments, if you will... But, you know, he wasn't as bad as maybe you would think after being sidelined since May, basically, or not having played a competitive game since May. So I think you have to start him. And obviously, if you go for a 3-4-3, he's not an out-and-out centre midfielder. He can play in a more attacking centre mid role in the 3-5-2. But as I'd rather go 3-4-3, you basically just have to play him as that right number 10 or that right wing or whatever you want to call it. And then I suppose it's going to be Batshuayi up front. I mean, maybe Pedro will play as he hasn't played that much recently, but obviously did start against Arsenal. But I just want Musonda and Barkley to start. There is a chance of Pedro starting instead of Batshuayi, as Conte already didn't really want to have to use Michi against Arsenal, as far as I'm aware. But having Pedro or possibly Barkley as the striker without William and Hazard on the pitch, I don't think that would go well at all. Now, it obviously depends on what team Newcastle are going to field. And also, if Benitez will go for it, which he probably won't, because he's rarely done that so far with Newcastle, even against much worse teams than us. Obviously, I told you what Benitez said about his possible team selection, but we'll obviously still have to wait and see what he's actually going to pick at the end. But all I can really say... If the youngsters I'd like to start, get to start. Just let them play. Let them impress. Tear Newcastle apart. Attack them. And don't you bloody dare sit off them when they attack. I can accept sitting a bit deeper as the game went on against Arsenal when it was still one all especially. But my main issue was how we literally let them get to just outside our box without closing them down or even trying to get the ball. You can't do that. Yes, of course, Newcastle won't be as good as, you know, taking advantage of that. But still, you know, don't do that against anyone. Try to win the ball back and try to score a goal. You know, you can't let them come that deep into your own half. Like, you know, if you want to sit in your own half, fair enough. But don't sit basically on your box. That's ridiculous. You better not do that tomorrow. That infuriates me. But now coming to my score prediction, and I'm kind of getting tired of these score predictions, if I'm honest. It could literally be anything from a 2-0 loss, over a draw, forcing another replay game, to a 4-0 win. Newcastle defend well, so if we're going to be static, lethargic, and just too slow in attack again... It's not going to be good, let's be honest. But if we get some good movement rolling like we did against Brighton, use the wingbacks to attack, but have the wide forwards offer fluid option for the wingbacks without having to stop and wait, giving the opposition time to get into shape, I think it can go very well. I know our wingbacks aren't the greatest. In my opinion, that's a big reason why, you know, this season is just not going that well, especially with the fatigue coming in it as well. People say it wasn't that many more games. Like I keep telling you, we've basically played every three days since October with one international break in between. So, you know, they are going to feel that fatigue. But, you know, I think we still have to use them a little bit better, possibly. And also, I mean, preferably, I'd still just sign better wingbacks. But, you know, if we get Dijon Sterling a start, he could, you know, prove a lot of people wrong. He could prove Conte wrong and maybe force Conte to start him more, use him more at least. You know, that would be good, but, you know, very difficult to judge what's going to happen, the lineup, and obviously the final result as well. But that's really it for me. Leave me all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. Obviously, I didn't really give you a score prediction now, but leave me your score predictions down in the comment section below. I'm really interested to see what you think of the game and what you think is going to happen. Also, leave me your predicted lineups down in the comment section below. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. We'd massively appreciate that. Also, don't forget to check out my social media, which is Slav1507 on both Instagram and Twitter. As you can see over here, it'd be class if you could follow me over there. Also, don't forget to subscribe. 100% Chelsea if you haven't already just click that button up there and you can subscribe we'd massively appreciate that thank you guys for watching up the Chelsea, and I'll see you next time